You won't believe how hard it was to get a job as a data analyst, especially in today's market. Trust me, I know. And the most important part, the first part that anybody ever sees is your CV. So to try and help some of you guys, I'm going to be reviewing 10 of your CVs. Watch till the end of the video to find out how your CV could be the one chosen for review. Hey everyone, my name is Junaid and I'm a graduate analyst working for a financial services firm in central London. I just got back from work and I thought I'd take you guys along with me in a day in my life. Today I had quite a few in-person meetings and there were people I had to see, so today I was working in the office. Today I woke up at 5.30, usually it's a little bit earlier, actually it's about an hour early, around 4 to 4.30 a.m. But today I really need that extra hour of sleep. I'll get ready and while I'm getting everything together for the day, I'll check my emails, the Financial Times, any relevant news that I need to have read. For some reason, the beginning of the year, straight after Christmas is always a busy period. I'll see an uptick in the number of client requests we have to deal with and there's some shareholder shuffling that's happened. So for the large part, my calendar's always booked up. There were also some regulation changes that were being implemented and they were due to affect everyone, almost everyone. And dealing with that takes a lot of time and effort as well. I like to get to the office around 8 to 8.30 a.m. but I'll roll in a little bit later than usual thanks to delays on the London Underground. My commute is my least favorite part of my day. Now, if you have a big piece of work or if you're working on a large project in finance as a data analyst, it'll the structure of that work will loosely look like this. I work on the piece with my team, then it'll get sent to the division. We'll then work together to add on to it. Then it gets sent to the other divisions who do their work on it. So for example, it'll get sent to the lawyers or the accountants and they'll add on to or amend whatever they need to. And like this, it'll get bounced around different teams and different divisions around the organization. And then once every single team, every single division is happy with it, we'll get it sent off to the C-suite executives who will then sign off on it and then get it sent to our client. Often what happens in the corporate world is that you'll have worked on a piece of work for months and months, everyone's happy with it, everyone's added their bit onto it. And when it gets to the delivery stage, one of the executive directors disagree with something that you did months and months ago. This morning I'd opened my emails and I saw that someone didn't like, not, not that they didn't like, but they were questioning the degree to which we'd rounded certain values in one of the models we'd created as part of the project. For example, if we'd used two degrees of rounding, they were arguing that we should have used three or more. Now there's a lot to unpack here. For example, some Excel models are so large and have so many calculation chains in them that if we were to add any more data into them, it would take an absolute age to make any changes or work with that file. Also, we chosen specific metrics to round, which ultimately either had a nominal effect on the output of the model, or those metrics that we'd rounded were within a 0.5% degree of accuracy. Now, while this issue might seem trivial, it's had actually been escalated to the EDs and discussions were being had about what we were going to do moving forward. So I knew my morning would be spent calculating the tolerances between having two degrees of rounding or three degrees of rounding. And in the afternoon, I'd have to present all my findings and give my opinion about what best practice would be moving forward. Around mid-morning, I'll go out and grab my first coffee of the day. Coffee right after you wake up can cause a crash later on in the morning, so I try to limit my intake of caffeine until a little bit later on in the morning. And I actually found a really nice spot that makes artisanal coffee using robusta beans. Now, during the morning, I'll usually be juggling quite a few ad hoc tasks alongside any of the big projects I'm working on. For example, there's a market monitoring publication, and I'll be updating daily net short positions for a section of that publication. Also, what else was I doing? Oh yeah, I had to provide analysis on a piece of work that the economists had requested. We'd recently hired a few junior analysts into the team and I had a call with my manager to discuss some points I had about some training I'd be giving them later that afternoon. For anyone new who joins the team, there's a lot of training that you have to do. At junior analyst level, we expect you to be proficient in Excel, dealing with data fundamentals, fundamentals of finance, the financial markets and how they work, and also some basics of SQL and Python or a programming language depending on where you're going to be fit in with the team. But there's still a whole slew of databases. I mean, even some newer AI tools that we've started to integrate into our workflows, you have to be trained on those. All these training sessions need to be documented and spaced out between the work, the actual work that we give to the new analysts. Now, since the team is a lot like a startup, we're getting a lot of work, but we don't have the resource to often fulfill that work. So we're also hiring new analysts and this morning, I also had a chance to sit in one of the recruitment interviews and being able to sit in these recruitment interviews is one of the most useful parts of my job. I get to see what makes a candidate tick. I get to see what the senior analysts and senior members of the team look for in new analysts. I get to see what skills they look for soft skills and hard skills and technical skills. So being able to see that thought process that they look for in new hires is, is really, really interesting. Now, my morning was quite long-winded. It ran over a little later than usual. So I'll leave the office around 1.30 for lunch. Now, sometimes lunch could be with a client. Last week, I had lunch with a client. 
on Wednesday. Last Wednesday, I had lunch with a client. Sometimes it could be with a colleague from another firm or company, or like in this case, with my brother, who also works in finance in central London. Luckily, both our offices are only a 15 minute walk away. Sometimes during lunch, there may be a client call that I have to take or a conference call that I have to sit in with the rest of the division while they discuss something or the other. In this case, I had a conference call with the analytics division, but thankfully it was a short one and I didn't actually have to give any of my input. I could just sit there and listen. Now, straight after lunch, I had a couple of follow-up meetings regarding the research and calculations that I'd been doing in the morning regarding the accuracy tolerances in the model. Now, I did my best to explain that regardless of whether we used two degrees of rounding or three degrees of rounding, the difference in the output of the model would be nominal, that I thought the model maintained a feasible and valid output without any additional work being done on it. Following that, I had training sessions with the new analysts and this training session in particular was focused on databases and there are some new ones that we've recently introduced into the team. Those of you who've seen my other videos will know that I was responsible for testing those new databases before we'd actually started implementing and using them and I had to test them for their usefulness and usability within our other workflows. So in general, here's how it works. Let's say you're doing a piece of work and we find that there's a piece missing or there's a metric that keeps coming up missing or it's a real pain to try and find that metric or alternatively in another case if we're being given new types of projects and work to do and we can't complete that with current databases or access to information we currently have then we'll try and look at what other sources could possibly give us that information to make our workflow more efficient and that new source often just ends up being a new database now since databases are expensive we don't just go and buy subscriptions to databases you have to conduct extensive testing to assess all the features that they offer how accurate the databases algorithms are for pulling company information so a database will have algorithms which go into a company's annual report and pull out the relevant metrics and revenue number of employees etc certain databases have really really good well-written algorithms that are really really accurate and ones that we can trust. Sometimes these algorithms can be incredibly inaccurate. So I'll have to calculate that accuracy, conducting a sample check. We'll also check how good their support level is for us, the analysts, in case we ever need to ask them about a feature or a bug that's in the database. And also we'll check for the scope of companies that they cover, i.e. private, public, listed, limited, etc. So I'd be pushing the limits of these new databases and, and really trying to figure out and documenting how well they fit in with our other workflows. Another thing we check, which is really really useful is that whether a database offers us data feed that we can integrate into our SQL server. Now certain databases have limits to what you can export from their website or their downloaded application but if we are able to get a data feed if we're able to integrate the database into a data feed then we have very few limits to the number of entities and rows we can export to Excel. And that's a really important consideration. So we'll test for that as well. Now, once the training session is over, I'll do a quick write up explaining everything we covered in the training session and send that to everyone who was involved in the training session just summarizing everything we covered and I'll also link a recording of the training session so all the new analysts who were involved have that as a reference point to refer back to anytime in the future. Now before the end of the day my manager and I had a short brainstorming session to try and figure out which companies fell under a an industry definition that had recently been changed or updated that had recently been updated. For example whenever a financial definition or financial company category changes. It's likely that the legislation for that change hasn't yet reached our databases. They haven't been updated to that change. And since we needed to know which companies fell under the new umbrella of that definition, we spent some time trying to figure out whether we could piece together that information with sources that we currently had at our disposal. Just before I leave, I'll send the piece of analysis I was conducting for The Economists back to them and head out the office and back home. And there you have it, a day in my life working as a data analyst in central London. All right, so I'm going to be reviewing 10 of your CVs. I'm going to be spending an hour each, so that's 10 hours, reading your CVs and providing feedback to you. And there's only three things you have to do if you want your CV to be one of them. Number one, this video needs to hit 400 likes. So technically we only need 100 people who watch the video, like the video and share it with three other people who also like the video and we're there. 400 likes, that's it. So if you're watching this, make sure you share this video with as many people as you can. Number two, you need to be subscribed. So go down and hit the subscribe button. Number three, comment down below. I need a way to contact you. So comment down below, interested, along with a video you'd like me to make in the future or a question you have that you want me to answer. And that question could be about anything. If we hear all of the above, then I'll pick 10 people in next week's video and spend an hour each reading and reviewing your CV and providing personalized feedback to you to help you land a job. Now, the job doesn't have to be specifically data analytics. It could be data science. It could be business analyst. It could be financial analyst. It could be investment banking. It could be anything within the realm of finance and tech. Now, this isn't the only time I'm going to be doing this exercise. Uh, I always get asked by people to review CVs, but there's just so, so many of them and I don't get the time to be able to review them in detail. So I'll definitely be doing this again in the future. 
So make sure you're subscribed and notified whenever I upload. That's all for this video. Follow my Instagram if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.